Hello, my name is Craig McFeeders, author of Luck Grib. This is, this is a video for sailors, and it will be the first of a short series talking about passage planning. I should note that I'm running version 1.3 of Luck Grib on my iPad, and later I'll be moving to my Mac, and where I'll be running version 3.2. Both of these versions were, were released uh, just recently. So in this video, I want to concentrate on the tools that are available in both the iPad and iPhone product, as well as the Mac product. The Mac product has additional tools, which I'll show in a later video. I may tease those today. And the scenario for this video will be that I want to sail down the coast, sail down the coast of the Baja Peninsula, starting in San Diego, way up here. And I want to sail down to Cabo San Lucas, uh, down here. So I've already downloaded a weather file. This is a 10-day GFS forecast. And yeah, let's get started. So the main tool on the iPad and iPhone for passage planning is the line tool. And the first thing we'll do is draw a line between our starting point and our ending point. So we'll start a line in San Diego and we'll draw the line down to Cabo San Lucas. So, oh, there we go. <laughs> the first little tip for our passage is that uh, in a straight line, it's almost 700 nautical miles. So yeah, that's a, I don't know, a little bit useful. The line travels uh, straight across the Baja Peninsula, along land most of the way. Uh, but it's a start. So in Luck Rib, there's a, an option to show a vessel moving along a line. So let's turn that on. We'll go into the, uh, the library area, choose settings, and then to come down to the show travel along line option, turn that on. Uh, you have an option for setting the speed. I'll use the average speed of five, and I wanna show dots along this line for every 24 hours of travel. So yeah, there we go. Uh, assuming we start, the line start time is when you, w what the forecast time was when the line was created. I'll modify that soon. But uh, yeah, there, there, there's the line broken up into uh, six days of travel, 5.8 days, which is shown on the right hand side in the measure box on top. Now, when I'm doing passage planning, there are a few questions I want to answer. The first question is, what's a good departure time and day? And then once I've departed, then I want to know what the general sailing plan is each day. So let's try and look at those uh, two questions uh, now. Well, the first one will be the departure time. So to plan a departure time, I want to, uh, well, download weather like I've done and then scrub through it to have a look at what's going on. Uh, and so in, in this case, we're seeing the vessel leave San Diego at the start of the forecast. So we'll, like, we'll ignore that for now. Uh, basically, we're just you know, look through the weather and see what we see. So it looks like the, uh, there's light wind up in San Diego initially in the forecast, and then ignoring the vessel going back to San Diego. Uh, it looks like the wind is staying light. Uh, as it, it's building a little bit around Thursday. Uh, it's kind of staying the same strength. Uh, it looks like it's about oh, nine knots. Not much. Yeah, it falls off again. It falls off more. And yeah, it stays light for the rest of the forecast. So of this 10 days, the strongest wind seems like it's around Thursday, late, kind of mid to late Thursday into Friday. So if you were, if you had to leave in this 10 days, uh, Thursday may be the day, if you were, if you're sailing, you might choose to leave. So let's look at the, the, big, the bigger view. Looks like the wind is fairly light the, uh, along the whole length. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's something going on. So it looks like uh, around nine days after the uh, this forecast starts, there's a, there's a cyclone or a circular low to our south. Uh, that's not good. Let's have a look at how strong that is. So it looks like the wind at this point is 55 knots sustained 
uh, gusting up to 70. So yeah, that's that's concerning. So and looking at that, it goes from a uh, southwest up to okay. It looks like it forecast to fall off pretty quickly and make landfall uh, just as a well you know a windy kind of a, a low nothing serious in the forecast but this is now a nine or ten day forecast and it's going to be a lot of difference uh, with this actual event to what we're seeing here or it could be a lot of difference uh, you can't trust this forecast this far ahead so it's forecasting that something's happening, uh, but what, in reality, we may see that this uh, this low could be more intense than it's being forecast, could be less intense, it may f move forward or backwards in time, and it may change its track, uh, where it makes landfall, and all that stuff. So really all we can tell, all this is telling us is that at the moment <laughs> it's forecasting uh, a low, which may either be, well, I guess 55 knots sustained. That's going to be a. Uh, I've forgotten now. If that's a, if that's a storm or a strong gale, but it's a yeah, it's a serious event. We want to be careful of that. So I guess having seen that, uh, I would be tempted if I was making the decision about leaving San Diego and sailing down to Cabo San Lucas. Uh, seeing this forecast, I would be tempted to uh, delay my decision. Uh, so you, you'd wait three or four days downloading weather every day, and then as we get closer to this event, the forecast will become more and more accurate, and we'll get a better idea what's going on. Now, depending upon your risk tolerance, you may want to sail down to Turtle Bay about halfway. Uh, it may be that that's far enough away that you might consider that safe. Uh, I, would, I would be tempted just to stay outside the hurricane zone completely. There's a general kind of idea that the, uh, the hurricane zone in this area uh, stops around the end of October, early, early November. Uh, but there's no rule, of course. It's just a rule of thumb. So yeah, you, I, may be, I may want to just stay outside the hurricane zone completely in San Diego for a while until this thing resolves itself. So yeah, that's the first thing to uh, to note with passage planning. You want to look at the uh, all the weather, and you kind of want to leave when the odds are in your favor. Uh, at the moment, we're not sure about those odds. Okay, but what we'll do is we'll continue anyway. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, we'll assume that this thing down here is not happening, and in fact, the uh, it's a you know, clear sailing down south of Cabo San Lucas. And we'll try to pick a good day to leave San Diego anyway. So we saw earlier that Thursday seemed to be around the strongest wind uh, for San Diego. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll change the departure time to, to Thursday. So I've put the uh, slider onto yeah around when you want to leave. So I'll say we leave here, uh, yeah, say at, at 2 p.m. Uh, we'll motor out of San Diego for a while and then start sailing a couple hours later. And then by the time we decide to start sailing, the wind has improved a little bit. Yeah, that's, that sounds uh, reasonable. Uh, so we'll change the departure time to around 2 p.m. And you do that by hitting this icon, the clock icon. And that's now changed the departure time of this line to, yeah, to that time. Now, if you want to start planning the uh, sail out of San Diego, what I'll do is I'll move the endpoint of this line uh, north, zoom in, and yeah, I have choices now between moving uh, straight south, I could go straight west, uh, I probably don't want to go north at all, uh, but it's going to be a choice between uh, where do you want to be you know, a day from now? Where, where do you want to be this time tomorrow? And then uh, as the passage progresses, you'll be downloading weather every day and making choices about where do you want to be uh, tomorrow every day until you, until you arrive. So you can change the time and get a, a sense of uh, where the vessel is going to be and uh, make the line you know, longer and shorter. 
but uh, you can show a mediogram, which is quite useful. So tap on the measure uh, information, and we see a mediogram show up. And the bottom row shows a relative and apparent winds, uh, which can be quite useful. So what I'll want to do is uh, change this mediogram, move it aside. And I'll scroll again. The blue line, the, the blue vertical line is showing where it is right now. And what I want to do is decide uh, what direction I leave San Diego. Now if I go straight west, what we're seeing is that the uh, the apparent wind, so looking at the text information on the right, the uh, wind at the vessel is showing the relative wind as being 36 degrees uh, off the starboard bow. And if we're traveling at five knots, that puts it at 25 degrees. And well, I know my vessel Loch Ness can't sail that close to the wind. So for me, I would need to head further south. So with the apparent wind, so I'm, I'm reading the text values again now. So with the apparent wind at around 47, I go a bit north, so yeah, around 40 degrees. That's, that's pretty comfortable for, for, uh, for me. So that's pretty much the, uh, the functionality in LuckGrib on the iPad and the iPhone for uh, doing passage planning. So what I want to do now is uh, move on to the Mac. So yeah, let's do that. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll copy the file over to the Mac. Okay, here we go. The weather file's now on the Macintosh. Uh, so I'll, I'll very briefly demonstrate the same thing on the uh, Mac. Uh, so new with version 3.2 is the ability to move uh, a vessel along a line. Uh, I found that ability quite useful in the uh, iPad and, uh, and uh, iPhone product to do very quick and dirty uh, passage planning tests. So we'll go on, we'll turn that on. So in the preferences for Luck Rib on the Mac, there is now a new option, uh, show travel along measure line. By default, it's off, but I've already turned it on. And I'll leave the travel speed and uh, the show dots distance the same. So now if you go to the line tool and draw a line, there we go, very similar to what we saw earlier. And I will change the departure time for this to be Thursday as well. So I was leaving around 1 p.m. on Thursday. Oh, sorry, 2 p.m. So I'll do that. Uh, at the moment, the vessel's way down here. But if I double click on the line, get a new menu arrives. Uh, reset start time. I'll do that. And now the vessel's leaving at 2 p.m. on Thursday, just as in the, uh, the iPad product. Uh, also new for this product is a, a mediogram. So there's a new button in the measure uh, information box. If you click that, you get a mediogram. And uh, yeah, this is the same as we just saw. What I'll do is I'll do a similar decision about leaving San Diego and heading uh, at a better angle for my sailing. So yeah, there we go. So that's pretty much yeah, what you just saw on your iPad is also available on Macintosh. Now I said at the start of this video, I may also do a short teaser for the uh, some more functionality available on the Mac. So I'll do that now. Uh, I'll do it pretty quickly. I'll, I'll come back and do more videos uh, on this in the future. But on the Mac, you're able to create vessels. So I'll do that now. Really curious. So we have a new vessel, and what I want to do is uh, leave San Diego at around Thursday or so. So I'll, I'll place the vessel. Uh, oops, I'll go to the tools, the proper tool. So I'll place the vessel in San Diego on Thursday, and now I'll create a route. So it's going to leave San Diego and head somewhere. Uh, well, I guess initially over here. So the uh, first point of the route uh, offshore and a little bit south 
Then from here I'll follow the coastline. Uh, let's head down to a oh, pretty far down. Add a point to the route, and then from here we'll come into Cabo San Lucas. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And now as we change the forecast time, oops, one last thing, we want to change the vessel and uh, have it follow the route we just created. And now as we change the forecast time, we have the vessel leaving San Diego, heading towards our route point, and then following the route all the way to Cabo. And uh, yeah, here we go. So, that's, so we ended up, if we were to leave then, and we were able to sustain five knots the entire way, we come pretty close to whatever this weather event ends up being, uh, which may be nothing, or maybe uh, yeah, a pretty serious low. So I'll come back and I'll show much more on the on these tools in the future videos. Uh, but for now, I think that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, these are the passage planning tools, or a sample of them. They're available on iPad, iPhone, and Mac OS. Uh, let me know what you think. Cheers.